Today we're taking a look at ZWO's AM3 mount, and this one just happens to have a picture of a cat on it. Welcome to Observatory. Hello, welcome back to Rob Observatory. I'm Rob Lyons. Today we're taking a look at ZWO's AM3 mount, and this happens to be the William Optics Red Cat edition. It's a fun little holiday collaboration that they're doing, and it's a limited edition of 200 units. You can look at this from two different perspectives. One, maybe it's a high pressure sales and marketing tactic to induce some FOMO and extract every last dollar from you over the holiday season. Or on the other hand, maybe it's just a fun, quirky collab and uh, they just didn't think a lot of people were gonna buy them. So personally, I think it's a little from column A and column B, but I do like it because I bought it, obviously. But I did feel that marketing pressure and I don't personally like being marketed to you. I'm sure you don't either. So it pleases me to tell you that this mount was not sent to me. It's not a gift. It's not on loan for me to do a review on the channel. There's no affiliate links down below. Uh, this is just my personal experience as we always do here on Raw Observatory. So this mount, it's a smaller brother of the AM5 mount, uh, which is a now pretty well proven technology uh, from ZWO. It's a workhorse of a mount. So this is the little brother version coming in at 3.9 kilograms. It'll carry eight kilograms of payload. And if you wanna put a counterweight on there, you have that option. You can go 13 kilograms with that. So. Uh, these strain wave mounts are different than the worm, uh, worm gear driven mount in that they can pack a lot of torque into a very small unit. So uh, it's kind of like Mighty Mouse. It can move a pretty decent sized scope in a very small form factor. And also they don't have to be balanced as well as a traditional mount. So they make for great portable, uh, you know, take anywhere, grab and go type setups. This one is a little smaller than the AM5, making it uh, much more convenient to take with you. I also grabbed the uh, TC40 carbon fiber tripod. I think this is my second or third of these. Uh, I own two AM5 mounts already, and that's a big deciding factor on why I purchased this mount is I had a great experience running those two AM5s for the last uh, year or two, what, however long they've been on the market. I've been running them every clear night and they've been performing. Uh, I think this is a great little mount. Uh, well worth the $1,500 US it would cost you if you wanted to buy one. And the tripod's a little pricey at $350, but I do like the tripod. Um, you know, you can probably do your own thing. I just bought it because it was very convenient. It's carbon fiber, it's strong, and I like the size. I like that it's a bit small, very stable. But you would know uh, more about these things if I would shut up and take them out of the box so we can check them out. So let's do that right now. So inside this brown cardboard box lies another box with the branding and all that stuff. And uh, inside this box, we get another box. Wow, this is like opening a Russian doll. I was actually surprised to see this foam box, uh, but I'm not mad at it at all. It makes perfect sense to have a smaller, lighter, and more affordable mount. Let's go ahead and pop this open and take a little look inside. Ooh, I'm getting hit with that new mount smell. It looks like this molded foam holds everything pretty nice and tight. Uh, here we have a USB cable. It comes with the same hand controller as the AM5. Honestly, I have three of these now and I've never used one, but maybe one day, who knows? Uh, the connection cable, I love the spiral design. That's gonna go in a drawer right next to my unused eyepieces. Oh, come on kitty, come out and play. These mounts feel a lot more robust than pictures actually make them look. It is noticeably smaller and lighter than the AM5, but it still has a little bit of heft to it. Uh, the engineering on this thing is stunning. Super solid. The fit and finish is absolutely premium. Kudos to the engineers and the manufacturer. Let's start on the top. We have both the Vixen and Los Mandy options on the saddle. On the side is the power button, your AM3 branding. Down on the bottom, we have the port for the counterweight bar if you wanna use that option. I love the stainless steel insert with the finger grip screw here. It's a nice little touch to cover the port. 
Here we have that fun William Optics Red Cat branding and we have the ports on the front. We have a new Bluetooth button that isn't on my AM5s. We have USB, ST4, hand controller port, and the 12 volt power port. This is a plastic plate. I expected it to be metal for whatever reason, but it's all good. I guess it keeps the weight down. Um, on this side, I'm noticing that the 12 volt power port is missing, probably to save space. Um, some people are gonna miss this, but I don't use mine on my AM5s. I power the AM5 directly from my ASI Air and ASI Air Minis, so uh, not the other way around. Also missing is the mounting point. There was like a little guide scope or ASI Air mounting point on the original AM5, which turned out to be a horrible mistake. So uh, it's good that they just left it off this. It was completely unnecessary and a bad move. So they learned from that. Uh, that's about it. Let's take a look in the box. We have uh, just an Allen key for mounting the plate for the TC40 tripod. Why don't we go ahead and get that done? There are three mounting bolts on the bottom to connect to your mount or pier. Here is the TC40 plate mounted up and ready to go. I actually like the TC40 tripod. It is small and light, which is the whole point of this mount. And uh, you can keep it small or you can extend it up a bit higher. Um, I'm in the office right now, so I'm just gonna keep it small. And at the bottom, we have this cloth basket that you can attach and uh, you can throw some extra weight in there for more stability or you could uh, place some accessories there. So there are piers available for these mounts and these tripods. I'm running without the pier because I don't think my small little red cat is gonna run into the legs. This keeps the center of gravity really low and which will make the rig more stable. Um, why don't we go ahead and throw the red cat on there right now? I know you're gonna ask about my setup. So this is the OG Red Cat 51, five position, two inch electronic filter wheel with a set of Altair Astro 4 nanometer dual band filters. Keep an eye out for a review on those coming up. And then I kind of alternate between other filters. I have an Optolong L Pro and uh, Antlia RGB Ultra tri-band filter in there at the moment, as well as a Darks filter. This is my OSC filter wheel. On the back, I have a modified Sony A7R that just celebrated its 10th birthday. And I'm running the Buckeye Stargazer uh, 3D printed Red Cat mounting accessory. It holds my focuser, the ASI Air, and the 30F4 guide scope from ZWO, along with the 290mm camera that I use for guiding. As you can see, this mount moves really smoothly. It's incredibly quiet, uh, except for the beeps when you turn it on and off, but you can turn those down or completely off within the software. So that's my overview of the AM3 William Optics Red Cat Edition. It's a great little mount. This mount's perfect for anyone running a wide field refractor uh, who wants to keep it small, portable, light, uh, perfect grab and go setup, if you will. And uh, I think it takes a spot away from its older brother, the AM5, because that kind of held that place, was uh, smaller, lighter than a traditional mount and no need for a counterweight. You could take it with you, set it up, get to shooting right away, no fuss, no muss. But the AM3 being the smaller, lighter, more affordable version of that, I think it's a, a way better option for that wide field rig. I think a lot of people are shooting things like a Red Cat on an AM5 and they're overmounted for that reason. So this will save you some money, save you some space in your bag and uh, a much better option. That's why I have it. And uh, that's who I would recommend this mount to. Anyone who knows that they're shooting a wide field rig and don't want to upgrade to a bigger telescope in the future because this is limited to eight kilograms of payload or 13 with the counterweight, but uh, there is a wall there. So if you think one day you might upgrade from your refractor to like an SCT or a Newtonian, I would strongly recommend you go with the AM5 instead. Um, yeah, great little mount. I don't want to leave this video without sharing some astrophotography with you. It's going to be uh, rainy here in the Pacific Northwest of Canada in January for quite a while, so I might not be able to get first light with this mount right away, but I'd hate to put up a video and not share some astrophotography. I've been doing a lot of it. So why don't we take a look at NGC 7822, the question mark nebula.
So I couldn't leave you without a couple of shots. That was the question mark nebula, the wide shot with the A7R and those uh, Altair Astra four nanometer filters. So that's a real SHO image from an OSC camera. I absolutely love that combination. I love that A7R full frame sensor on the Red Cat, beautiful wide field shot. It's gonna be so much better on the AM3 moving forward. Uh, the more close up view is with the 533 MC Pro. And that was the Optolong L Ultimate filter. I was testing some filters, trying to figure out what was gonna be my forever filter. Um, my decision, you're gonna to have to wait and find out. I have some videos coming up when I put these filters through their paces. More exciting news, I'm building an observatory. It's been a full year in the process. I've had it. I have a Skyshed pod sitting on my roof, unassembled, waiting for yet another permit from the city before I can build it. So in the spring, when uh, the Canadian winter thaws out, I will build that observatory. We'll do that on the channel. And also I'm going to uh, university full time now for space studies. So this channel is gonna move beyond merely astrophotography. We're gonna start doing more astronomy, more space related content in general and uh, kind of expand along with the cosmic microwave background. So if that sounds good to you, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more. And until next time, my friends, don't take my word for anything, get out there. See for yourself.